Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quite Frankly. This is the video series where we talk about new products, reviews and what not more. And today guys I have something that I'm really psyched about. We have the new Hansel Certo 400. So join us for today's episode of Quite Frankly. It's all about the Hansel Certo 400. It's an amazing stroke, I can already tell you that. If you like what we do, subscribe to our channel, leave comments below, smash that like button because we really like that. And of course, tell other people about it so we can grow our channel. Let's go. Now, one of the most exciting things when you start your studio career is, of course, buying those strobes. Don't we just love spending money on gear? Don't tell your wife. But it's also one of the most confusing things. Which strobe should I buy? Well, in my opinion, it's actually something you have to think about. Because in the future, most money you spend will go into modifiers and not in these bad boys. You will have strobes, but modifiers is something that you build your whole studio with. Now, one of the things that I always liked about the Hensel system is actually their way of connecting those modifiers. Now, we work with interns and it often happened that, for example, an intern, well, puts a modifier on and you find out that it's not 100% secure, so it falls off. With this system, it's actually incredibly simple. If they do something like this wrong, well, find another intern. You just pull this lever and you just take the modifier off. When you want to turn, put it on again, you just pull the lever and you just set it on. Now, the cool thing about this one, I love to work, for example, with strip lights. And strip lights, you can, of course, use straight on, but I love to angle them. And with this mount, all modifiers, you can actually just turn around like this. So it goes really easy. So when you buy a system like the Certos, those are the really price friendly new strobes from Hensel, you have that Hensel mount. So that's for me a big plus. But there's way more, of course, what makes these Certos really interesting. We're going to go through a few chapters in this video and I'm going to show you very short why I think the Certo is without any doubt a must buy for all you strobe lovers out there. So let's start. Now, of course, the first thing you want to know, what's in the box? Yeah, that's one of the most exciting things. Unboxing videos, they take 10 minutes. You know what? I don't want to spend 10 minutes on unboxing. I'm just going to tell you. There's a 200 watt series, there's a 400 watt series. You have one series that's actually with umbrellas, and you have one series, the portrait series, where you have a softbox. In the box you also find, of course, your power cables. Very handy, because without power they don't work. In the box you will find one Cactus remote control. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that later. You're going to find the two reflectors, really like reflectors. And of course, depending on the system you use, you find a softbox and of course an umbrella. But do these babies float? No, of course not. So Hensel also delivers you some really nice stands. And of course you want to go on location. You want to go to your grandma and take some really cool pictures, right? So they also give you a carrying bag. That's really complete and it's in a cool box. So that's what's in the box. Now, one of the things that I find really interesting is actually that you have this protective glass over your flash tube. Now, I hope it will never happen, but sometimes flash tubes can explode. And at that point, you have your studio filled with glass. It's not really a pretty sight. Now, in all honesty, in all those years that I've been shooting, I never, ever had a flash tube that literally exploded. But the modeling lights and the flash tube, of course, can get really, really hot. Now, I won't say that this won't get hot but at least you have some form of protection above it. And in a price range like this, this is really sturdy. It has good ventilation, so Hansel, really cool. That's one of the first points that you will find interesting on the Certo. Now, of course, you guys want to trigger your strobes, right? Because if you don't trigger your strobes, there won't be any light. Now, of course, you can use a priority system, like, for example, the Hansel remotes. And these look really great. But it's also very smart sometimes to have a system that's a little bit more open. And that's why starting with these strobes, Hensel actually switched to the Cactus system. Now, a lot of you guys will know Cactus. They have a really good reputation. They make really good triggers. And 
it's a really nice idea that now actually there are so many more options for the future. So what will happen? We don't know yet, but the Cactus system is actually really cool if you want to mix, for example, speed lights with your studio strobes. And well, there are many, many options. And the future will tell what happens. Now, don't worry if you still have older strobes from Hansel and you go like, hey, is this compatible with this one? Well, they are not, but don't worry. If you have an older system of Hansel, there are two solutions you can use. One, on the Cactus, there's actually a hot shoe. So what you do is you just do the discovery and space shuttle method. So in other words, you just mount them like this. Remember the space shuttle on the Boeing? Something like that. And it will work. But you can also, of course, on the back of the Serto, just set it on optical slave. Or put your older strokes on optical slave. Now, what is an optical slave? It's very simple. It's a sensitive cell that triggers when it sees light. So in other words, if one of the strobes goes off, the sensor sees that light going off and it will actually trigger the strobe. So there are many solutions, but in my opinion, it's very, very positive that Hensel actually chose to go for the Cactus system. It's one of the most known systems well, on the market. It's really versatile and it just works like a charm. So new remote, Cactus remote. Now, of course, you guys want to know, what can this baby do? Well, you know what? The best thing a strobe can do is be consistent and reliable. And what you know from Hansel, right? It's a high-end brand. They really make cool stuff. And when I look at the Serto, it's, it's not what I expected. In all honesty, I knew that they were coming out with a cheaper strobe. And they literally just blew me away. One, I just love the look of it. It's, it's, it's really cute. But it's also really sturdy this is something that i wouldn't drive my car over it but i wouldn't be surprised if i drive my car over it that it will still work now of course you can just fill your strobes with all these kinds of stuff like delayed strobing stroboscopic effect and whatnot more but in the end do we still use it actually not we want to make consistent images with consistent color temperature flash duration and of course exposure but we also want to be able, of course, to, well, control those strobes. Well, the back panel couldn't be simpler. You can select your channels. So we have 16 channels you can choose from. You can turn it on and off. Very handy. You can, of course, raise the power by one tenth of an f-stop. You can test fire the strobe. You can actually turn the sound on and off. You can turn the modeling light on and off. And it, of course, is proportional so, so that means that if you lower the output of the strobe the modeling light will go down if you raise the output of the strobe your modeling light will go up so very very handy and the other thing is of course there's a trigger inside for the remote control but also an optical slave and that means that when you press the sync button twice you can actually switch between those so you can turn it off you can turn it on optical slave or you can turn it for the remote control so really simple backplane and of course the display for the power and well do you need more yes of course you need more you also need to be able to trigger it by for example another remote control or maybe a cable and they also thought about that there's also of course the sync wire input because you don't want it without don't go the way that smartphones go without a headphone jack we really need that headphone jack on strobes because, well, maybe you want to use another trigger or a cable. So that's the back panel. Let's go to the next chapter. Now, you guys know I love light meters, right? And in my opinion, it's very simple. If you use a light meter, you know that you nail your exposure and you know that that exposure is dead on. So if you change your set and you take the same light meter reading, you will actually have the proper exposure throughout the set, meaning if you shoot it against a white backdrop, then move your model to a black backdrop, or well, you get the story, right? You have a constant quality of light and a constant exposure, meaning that, for example, the dress will look the same in all the images. Now, the thing is, with high-end strobes, you know that when you take one light meter reading, that will be constant. So every time you fire the strobe, you will have the same outcome. But in most budget strobes, there will be a slight difference between, let's say, shot one, shot two, shot three. Now, sometimes this is extreme, like one third of an f-stop. Sometimes it's very, very minor, like two tenths of an f-stop. And I was really curious to see how these perform, because, again, th this is a really budget-friendly strobe. And 
that's actually where most of the things will go wrong. So we prepared a few tests and the first test was actually a killer test. It's fire the strobe, wait for the beep and fire it straight again. I did it for five or six shots and I constantly checked the light meter. As you can see in the video in the corner. Now, it really surprised me that actually there wasn't even a one tenth of an f-stop difference. It was constant, very, very constant. So when it said 5.6, it was 5.6 on all the exposures. Maybe there was one or two in there that was one tenth of an f-stop off, but overall, I didn't really let the strobe recycle. As soon as I hear the beep, boom, next shot. So that, that mimics how you work, because let's be honest, you don't shoot a portrait, you wait for the beep and you wait another second to take the next one. You hear the beep and you immediately want to shoot. So this was a real life situation test. Now, of course, you can have different settings on your strobe, right? So at one point you want to shoot on F11, the next you want to shoot on F8, maybe use a modifier that takes away a little bit more light, like a strip light. So you want to make sure that that same behavior is over the whole range of the strobe. And that's why, while you watch the video in the corner, you can actually see that we did this on the lowest setting, on the highest setting, on 80%, and actually somewhere in the middle. And again, it performed like a charm. The, the biggest difference we metered was one-tenth of an f-stop. And one-tenth of an f-stop, that can literally be that there's a little bit of a dust particle in front. No, I'm just kidding with you guys. But one-tenth of an f-stop, that's nothing. It can be a difference in, in, the, in the light meter or that I pushed it a little bit backwards when I pressed the button. So awesome performance in, well, exposure. But how about color? Because that's a totally different question and that's in the next chapter. Now exposure, well, that's actually pretty simple. You, that's not really simple, but that's not where the real problem lies. The real problem, especially with budget strobes, and I don't want to label this a budget strobe, by the way, it's a budget-friendly strobe. So the real problem often is with color uniformity, and that's maybe even worse than exposure, because exposure you can still change a little bit in Photoshop or Lightroom, but color, that's a totally different question. Because with color, we want to make sure that in every exposure we make, the colors are the same. Now imagine shooting, for example, for a client, a very, very beautiful blue dress, and it has a certain color blue. Now, how do you capture that blue? Now, the first thing, of course, is you use a light meter to determine your exposure. Now, when you have your exposure, let's say F8, you want to make sure that that color of that dress is actually the same thing. Because if you order something online and you get it at home, you want to make sure that you actually have a blue dress that fits your blue scarf. And if the blue scarf is a different color than the blue dress, and the blue dress is actually more against cyan, you will send everything back and that will cost your client a lot of money. So that's why when we shoot something that has to be color accurate, is actually we use something like this, an X-Rite Color Checker Passport. And these are awesome because they make profiles. You can use them in Capture One, you can use them in Lightroom, and you can use them actually in most software packages nowadays. And these are really important because these literally determine if the color is correct. So we used a color checker, and in this case we used the color checker video, but they're actually the same for this purpose. And we shot several images. And again, you can see that in the video in the corner. Now, the, the main thing about this is just put it on the lowest setting and shoot. Go to the middle setting and shoot. Go to 80% and shoot and go to 100% and shoot. The first image, I took a white balance reading and I did it in Capture One because that's my main tethering and raw conversion program. And I made sure that that was correct. And then I compared all the other shots on that same setting to that first one. The outcome, the Certo, again, really surprises because it's incredibly stable. Now you expect a little bit of a difference between, let's say, full power and low power. And actually the Certo, well, Hansel did it. Well, you, you can't label something perfect, but let's say if I can label something perfect, this one is really, really close to perfect. It, let me put it this way. I didn't expect at this price point that it be so incredibly stable. And that's for my one of the most important things. You guys know I love to tint my images. I love to give my images that personal look. And that means that I use presets. And those presets is a calculation. A little bit more red, a little bit more blue. And I want to make sure that every shot I take, that that preset does exactly the same thing. So that color uniformity is incredibly important in a strobe. 
And this baby, well, you saw it in the video. It's just stunning. So let's go to the next chapter, to something that's very dear to my heart, and that's capturing motion. Now, we all love portraits, right? But let's be honest, a portrait is a portrait, and a portrait is a little bit like, well, it, it's a portrait. What I love to do with photography is actually have some motion in there, and that can be smoke, it can be a model that turns around and flicks her hair, it can be a jumping model, it can be anything, as long as there's a little bit of motion in there. Now, in the studio, we're often limited to 125th of a second as our shutter speed. We also call this the x sync. And that means that when we want to freeze motion, you need something that's a little bit more high, right? Because on 125th of a second, you can't freeze motion. But you have to realize that in the studio, there are no lights. Well, there are no lights that will actually render on your image. And if you want to test this, in your studio, just take a picture without your strobes going off. And you will see that your image is probably pitch dark. So that means that when the strobe goes off, it actually renders your model or your subject or whatever you want to photograph. Now, that also makes clear that that strobe actually determines if you freeze motion or not. Now, on most budget strobes, the shutter speed is still 125th of a second, but the flash duration is often in the 1 400th of a second, 1 600th of a second, and maybe if you're really lucky, it's about 1 800th or 1 1000th of a second. Now, in all honesty, for freezing motion, that's too low. And that means that when, for example, your model turns around very violently and those hairs go flying, you will see that the eyes are a little bit unsharp, a little bit blurred, and when you go to the hairs, it's even worse. You won't see any sharpness, it's just one big blur of hair. Now, as soon as you go towards the 1500, 2000 of a second, that's actually where you start really freezing motion. Now, when we look at the Expert 500 from Hensel, which without any doubt is my favorite strobe in the Hensel system, you're talking about anywhere between 1 6,000th of a second, and we even metered up to 1 9,000th of a second, which is actually far beyond the specs that Hensel gives you. Hey, we did another video on that one. So those are really, really fast, and when a model turns around, everything is frozen, like, well, like, like frozen. So when we shoot with this one, we actually tested it out with our model Lois. And we just let her turn around really violently and zoomed in. Let's take a look at that. So we're now in Photoshop. And I'm actually zooming in on her face. And as you can see, the eyes are sharp, but also the hairs are pretty sharp. This I would label absolutely usable for freezing motion. So the Serto scores again. And of course, we did a test on the different settings. So we started out on the lowest setting, middle setting, and of course, highest setting. And in the corner, you can see the results. As you can see on the light meter, this is a Sarconic 858. It really meters the flash duration. And this is really powerful because often you need to find that sweet spot. You want to make sure that you freeze that motion on the fastest setting possible. Now, normally, of course, you determine your depth of field in the studio and then you just set your strobe for, for example, F8. When you want to freeze motion, you actually want to set your strobe on the fastest possible flash duration. And if that's F8.3, that actually means that you shoot on F9. But that's a little bit more complicated for this video, I think. Just remember, when you want to freeze motion, and you use a light meter like this, you find that sweet spot for freezing motion, and then you adjust your aperture or your ISO to freeze that motion. And these, over the whole range, they're very usable for freezing motion. And in a budget-friendly strobe, that's really cool. Okay, so we've come to the end of this video. If you're still watching, well, you probably like me, or you are interested in the Serto. Let's hope both. So, what do I think about this new system from Hensel? A few months ago, they told me they would bring out a strobe that was really affordable, and I knew from Hensel, it's a high-end brand. If you buy a Hensel strobe, you know you buy quality. Now, sometimes it happens that a manufacturer will have really great high-quality gear, and they bring out something that's cheaper, and you just feel it's cheap. You, you hold it in your hand and you go like, this is not my favorite brand. This is something completely different. Sometimes they even change the mount, and they really make two distinct series, the high-end series and 
well, we have to compete with other guys. So here you have something that we threw together in Indonesia, or wherever, and hey, it's cheap. This one, in all honesty, everything is very, very sturdy. Again, I did it in the start of the video. It really feels sturdy. It has the same mount. It's metal. The mount is metal. That's very important because you don't want a plastic mount on something like this because when you use heavier modifiers, you don't want it to break down. It's a really nice handle that won't break off. The back panel looks really sturdy. And most of all, and this is also important, where sometimes a lot of money is saved, that's actually this mount. You don't want to know how many guys I talked about that had these cheap Chinese or Indonesian brands where they literally break off this or where, for example, they had it on the stand. And let, let me put it this way. So they had it on the stand and they have a heavy modifier on it. And you will see this happening during the photo shoot. And you go from the hot spot on the face of the model to the glamour position to totally dark. And you don't want that, of course. You want to make sure that when you have color accuracy, you have exposure accuracy, that also your strobe, of course, stays on the same level where you put it, especially with a heavy modifier. Now, this one has a really sturdy connector. So when I tighten this, and I don't even do it all the way, I'm a strong guy. And with all due respect, I just, I just can't move it. And again, I didn't even tighten it completely. So when I loosen it up, it goes really easy. So everything just feels quality, you know, it's, I always love to do this a little bit loose so I can actually move my strobe around and then just give it one quarter and then it's stuck and it just works. So, and again here, you have a little bit of a spring so you can tighten it on your stand. In short, for the money you pay for this, the whole set, two 400 strobes, umbrella, stand, power cables, uh, a, cactus, a cactus remote, go out and buy a set if you can get them because i think these guys will sell out like crazy hansel awesome job what more can you say they rock <laughs>